Well, hello again. Here's another issue for the yes or no treatment. This is a pretty big uh, current one in the early days of 2021. And it is this. Are cities in decline? Well, why raise this issue now? It's just that there are so many forces at work right now that tend to kind of elevate this question. Of course, there is the notion of... uh, the excessive cost of residential housing in cities, which has gotten really marked in the last the last few years, there's the uh, idea of uh, the impact of the internet on online retailing and how uh, storefront retailing is this kind of on the way out. There's the whole problem of the coronavirus and what it does to people's desire for proximity to other people and lack thereof. And then there finally is the reduced demand for office space because of the way in which a remote working has kind of taken hold during the coronavirus. So, so there's a lot of things going on here that we have to give some attention to. And therefore, we have to ask to ask the question: Are, are cities in, in decline? Well, let's let's start out by saying uh, yes, yes, they're in decline. Let's let's take a, take a look at some of the forces at work. Well, above all, there is the question of the uh, coronavirus and and the fact that uh, the incidence of uh, contagion, infection, and so forth does tend to be higher, city, higher in cities simply because people are closer together. We have lived with this uh, since time immemorial. Certainly uh, uh, in, in Europe for a thousand years there have been plagues and epidemics and pandemics and so forth off and on. It, it, it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing. What is different, of course, now is that we have the science to do something about it rather than just waiting until it goes away. Uh, But nonetheless, it is still, as we have seen, tremendously disruptive and uh, certainly does not uh, bode well well for cities, really. Uh, It's it's something that frightens people about being too close and and may easily drive them to be... uh, drive them into the countryside where, where they were further apart and, and sitting at their little terminals and, <laughs> and do it, writing their memos and doing their financial trades and so forth online. Uh, so, uh, oh, that's, that's a big issue for, for, for cities, isn't it? The fact is that the uh, population of New York City, for instance, has been declining for the last five years. Uh, and people are going to places with more, as they say, amenity. People just want out of the uh, polluted air, the noise, the hysteria. They, they, you know, they want a quieter, easier, more pleasant, more salubrious uh, life. And that's a, a, a trend, I suppose, that uh, it goes up and down. But I think it's been a bit more marked lately. Of course, exacerbated by the coronavirus. But, but it's a general trend that has been uh, at work as well. We also live in a, in a crazy era of um, cyber crime and maniacs trying to disrupt information systems and, and electrical grids and all the rest of it. Uh, uh, why these people are doing this and why they want to be so destructive probably goes back to their, uh, their genetic defects or their parental abuse or whatever, but nonetheless, they're out there, they have access to terminals, they're always trying to uh, screw up the electronic and electrical infrastructure, and cities uh, certainly are most at risk of that. I mean, imagine what happens if somebody manages to shut down the electrical grid in London and the tube grinds to a halt, uh, and the uh, electricity supply goes out. Well, at least out in the countryside, you can kind of... Uh, get on with your more remote life and maybe even grow some vegetables in the back garden. You can't really do this uh, uh, in the city. And, and uh, uh, so uh, it's, it's another reason to feel kind of nervous about uh, being in the city. So, so there are some forces at work, some forces at work here that make you 
mm, uncomfortable about staying in the city, that are driving people out, and there doesn't seem to be any likelihood anytime soon that those forces will diminish. So that's the argument for uh, cities being in decline. What about those who say, no, they won't be? <clears throat> well, uh, to begin with, any kind of a well-managed city, you know, with a decent governance structure and so forth, will address all of these issues and, and have always done so. Uh, whether with technology, or whether with discipline, whether with uh, new rules and ordinances and regulations, uh, decent governments simply get on with it. One way or another, they, they will cope. Um, uh, secondly, uh, for those who are in uh, any kind of job that requires creativity, I suppose what I'm saying, other than being just kind of an automaton, uh, that really tends to thrive in areas where you're around other people, where you're bouncing ideas around and so forth. Uh, that's why Silicon Valley uh, works well, because they're all squeezed in together and they all have lunch with each other and all that kind of thing. Uh, so the, the, the whole notion of, of creating uh, new structures, coming up with new ideas, does depend very much on proximity to other like-minded people. So again, a pretty good reason to, to stay in the city. I mean, similarly in the financial services industry, a lot of what goes on among people who, for instance, are trading, taking positions in stocks and so forth. A lot of that depends on gossip, uh, what have you heard, here's what I've heard and so forth. Again, that does uh, require a level of proximity. <clears throat> also, there are many people who just like cities. Uh, they like the buzz, they like the excitement, uh, they like the whole atmosphere of uh, if you will, uh, noise and laughter and shouting and carrying on rather than the boring dullness of the countryside and, and the uh, loneliness of uh, being out in the middle of nowhere, out in, out in the sticks. And if you like restaurant choice, if you like going to restaurants, uh, uh, you're simply not going to find them in some small town. So uh, those are some pretty good arguments, uh, I would say. Uh, in favor of um, cities continuing to thrive. Well, what's my take on all of this? Well, um, as I said earlier, uh, I, I think the big contingency is whether or not we will sort out this virus once and for all, whether we'll have a resurgence of variations of mutations, whether other coronaviruses uh, will crank up, whether the uh, Chinese peasants will figure some other way to get uh, disease from their pigs or whatever and spread it around the world. Uh, and uh, uh, we, we can't really be confident that that won't happen, but it's completely uncertain. It, it's, it, it's, it's a mystery in, in, the, in the horizon. Of course we have some degree of confidence that by throwing everything at it we, we can cope, but oh gosh, it certainly is at a cost, both to the economy and to our uh, to our well-being so uh, my, my thought there is uh, if we knew a bit more about the likelihood of that happening we could be a little bit more confident about protecting the uh, the future for cities but we don't and therefore that makes the outlook uncertain another thing that we do know though is that cities are going to be uh, changing quite markedly uh, the recent announcement by the biggest bank in the UK, HSBC, that they are reducing their office space 40% worldwide tells you that the whole notion of uh, uh, working online, uh, working remotely and so forth is an idea that has been forced by the coronavirus and it's an idea whose time has come. So. Uh, how cities uh, react to that is a little bit uncertain as well. Will people be content to sit at their terminals in the city, or will they say en masse, well, uh, if I don't have to be here, why should I be here? I'm, I'm going to leave and head for the, for the, for the greenery of, the, uh, of, of village life, or at least the suburbs. 
Um, and then uh, finally, there's the whole issue of online retailing and what it's doing to conventional storefront uh, retailing. That certainly has the potential to change the face of cities. Uh, uh, one optimistic uh, view of that, of course, is that much of that space could become residential accommodation and therefore ease the pressure of housing on cities and so forth. So, well, uh, the one thing we do know, well, one thing we do know is that cities are in for a big change. There's a big element of uncertainty there, but, but uh, the world will never be the same. Okay, well, hope you liked that. If you did, the usual thing, uh, give me a like, subscribe, a comment, uh, notify, etc. And I'll see you at the next one.